What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we have Bossman 12 Boss all the way down from Connecticut for, for takeover. And he brought down his Boss 302. Now, the reason it's up on the rack right now is because we are going to put in a DSS drive shaft. So, we're going to do that, and then we're going to drive the car around. I'm going to give you guys my impressions on the car, what I think about the car. I have driven the car already, but I have not gotten on it spiritedly and put it around some curves or anything like that. I wanted to save that for the video, but guys, just look at it. Boss 302. I love these cars. Now, this is a 2012. Look at that. Mm, love it but anyway guys we're gonna get the drive shaft installed and then i'm gonna take it down the road i'm gonna tell you guys what i think about it because i have never driven aside from today last night and today driven it just to you know to here and stuff like that i have not really got on a boss 302 and been able to enjoy it for what it was built for or anything like that so today we're going to install a drive shaft and then we're going to take it down the road and give you tell you guys what i think about it right now i'm in love with the car but anyway guys, we're going to get the drive shaft installed and take this thing down the road. All right, so we got the stock drive shaft out and we got the DSS aluminum drive shaft going in. This will save you 18 pounds according to drive shaft shop. And when we was doing the GT500, I did weigh the two drive shafts and it was a little over 17 pounds, so right at 18 pounds difference on the two drive shafts. All right, so it's pretty straightforward on how to get the drive shaft out. You've got the four nuts right here. And then if you look right here, there's a little uh, lip right here. You, you just pry back. It goes over this piece right here. Just pry it back and then knock the flanges back. Then once they are back, this will drop down, giving you access to the drive shaft. You have these six bolts back here, and then you have the two center carrier bolts that mount the carrier, the, uh, carrier to the body. And then you have the four drive shaft bolts up here. Then it's a matter of just taking the drive shaft out. And of course, the new dry shaft will bolt back in the same exact way, aside from not having to worry about the pesky center carrier bearing mount. All right, guys, so we're going to get that back up in there. Alright guys, so we have the drive shaft installed and we get to drive the car down the road and see how I like it. Already, it's a manual, so that's a big plus in my book. I know, I know, I've got an automatic, but as you guys know, I do love my manuals. I really do, and I will have another one one day, guys. We will have another one. And I was talking to him, I said I would not mind having a 13 Boss 302 or a gt350 one or the other hopefully we got everything with the drive shaft and we do not have to clock the drive shaft sometimes when you put a drive shaft in an aftermarket drive shaft 
the vibration hits you around a certain uh, mile per hour and you need to clock the drive shaft when i installed it on my gt500 i did not have to do so so we were good to go so i'm hoping that that is the case now so we're not going too far from the shop just in case we have to go back <laughs> Guys, I don't know. Being able to shift again is so nice. All right. Uh, I want to go this way. This way has more curves than that way. All right, here we go. All right, guys. So we're going to take this car around some curves and uh, see, how, see how we like it. It still has the stock clutch, stock transmission, and everything like that. And it, guys, it only has. This is a kicker. Hold on. Let me see. Info. You set to clear. See, as you can see, track key enabled, idle enabled. This car only has 13,456 miles. So, literally, the only thing done to this car is a few cosmetic things, wheels, and now the drive shaft. Yep. So. My only question to you is why don't you drive this more? <laughs> that is my only question because I would have already racked up the miles on this thing. Uh, and that's why when I had the GT500, I'm like, I'm putting a lot of miles in this car, but I love to drive. But nothing wrong with it, you are from Connecticut, so you have a lot of months where you cannot drive this car. Pretty much six months. And the underneath of this car is immaculate. I was actually looking at it. You could not even tell this car has been up north at all. It is immaculate underneath it. The exhaust is not rusted out. The suspension is not rusted out. Uh, the underneath of it is perfect. And I'm like, well, I can see why you don't drive it a lot. You want to keep it that way. That's right. And you know, it, it is a collector's car. It is a Boss 302. Uh, but for me, I guess because I live in the South, so I get a lot more drive time than people do up North. But the car is handling fantastic. I actually love the car. And you're pushing me more and more to one day buy a 13 Boss 302. Or a GT350. But I really, really love the Roadrunner engine in the car. It, um, it can handle a lot of power. So with me and my dumb ideas of boosting everything, uh, it would survive if I decided I wanted to throw some turbos on it or I wanted to do something else it would 100% survive what I wanted to do. And plus, the Roadrunner engine has been around now since 2000, you know, 2012, 2013. I really haven't heard of a lot of failures with it. It's a really stout, it's a completely forged engine. A lot of the components that are in the Gen 2 engine came from the Boss 302. And that's the reason I think the Gen 2 is such a strong engine. And the Roadrunner is another engine that can just handle the power. And I'm loving the, just being back in a manual again, shifting gears, feeling a lot more connected with the car. Don't get me wrong, guys. I love the 10R80. I do for what it is. But, man, there's nothing like shifting your own gears. But man, this car is handling so well. Oh, man. I'd get in a lot of trouble with this car. <laughs> And guys, he does have the side pipes uncorked. Uh, we did verify while I was on the lift. The side pipes are uncorked. Yesterday when he showed up at the dealership, I suspected it because it was pretty loud from the side when he was revving it up, but we did go ahead and check today and the restrictor plate is removed from the side pipes on the Boss 302. That's something if you have a Boss 302, I highly recommend because the car sounds so much better like that. You know, one thing you gotta remember with the Boss 302, is this was the go-to track car before the GT350 was released. 
this was it. This was the track car. This was Ford's track weapon. And then the GT350 was released. And now they had a 2020 GT500. And now they're coming out with the 2021 Mach 1, which I believe is taking the place of the GT350. So cars are always evolving. But however, when you get into this Boss 302, it, even though it's a live axle, it handles so well. All right, guys, we're gonna get up here. We're gonna get out and take a look at the car. It goes around the curve and just asks for more. All right, guys, so we are out here and the red key is in the car. And as you know, with a Boss 302 with a red key, you do have what is a faint little lope. Uh, you can hear it right there, just a little lope. And actually, guys, it's kind of the same thing they do with the uh, Ghost Cam tune. It's just a little more aggressive with the Ghost Cam tune. But that was built in from the factory with the red key with the Boss 302. And guys, this thing is a blast to drive. I haven't driven with the black key. There's no need. Only drive with the red key. You only drive with the red key. I'm only driving them with the red key. But guys, this thing is a blast to drive. I want to thank you for coming down, bringing the car to me. This is the first time I've driven a Boss 302, and I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And, man, this thing is just... Besides, and it's all, you know, like I said in the, earlier, it's all stock aside from a little cosmetics, the wheels, and the drive shaft. Everything else is stock. 13,000-mile Boss 302. And, man, I just love this car. Guys, I hope the wind noise ain't horrible. Um, I'll try to shield you from it the best I can, but this car is just beautiful. All right, guys, there is the heart of the car, the Roadrunner Boss 302 engine. And you actually have a, this is Parnelli Jones Air Raid. And you say you don't have to have like a tuner or anything to run that? Nope. Okay. But, man, it is so clean. And like I said, it's hard to believe this car spends its life up north. It's so clean underneath, so clean under here. All right, guys, so we're going to let him drive it, and he's going to give you what he thinks of before and after the drive shaft. He's driven the car a lot before the drive shaft. I only drove, drove it for just a little bit. So I imagine a lot of you guys are going to be asking, you know, how's the car feel after the drive shaft? So I figure let him drive the car and let him tell you exactly what he thinks of the drive shaft.